This tutorial is going to talk about using image trace and clipping mask to create icons for diagramming in Illustrator. This page is set up as an 11 by 17. We've got two site plans in the background that are both on layer one and that layer is locked. We've also got a pedestrian circulation diagram that we have here, but on the right side we're going to use some icons to show how we're going to distribute site furniture across this particular plan. Down below the drawing I have a color palette from Adobe Color and uh, some icons going to be used. I'll combine both the, the color swatches here uh, with an image trace of these icons to create the diagrams. We've also got some images of site furniture that we're going to include in the plan. Now these are embedded in here just through copy and paste, but uh, you could also link them in. It'll work just the same either way. The first thing we'll do is we'll grab uh, this bike icon and I'm going to go to Window and Image Trace. This brings up our Image Trace dialog right here. Now in Image Trace, I'm going to really just focus on two things. I'm going to just accept the auto color, although you'll notice there are a bunch of different presets here. Uh, for how we can begin to trace this image. What image trace is going to do, it's going to take this uh, JPEG or this raster image and it's going to convert it into a vector drawing uh, through tracing it. All of these toggles will begin to you know, refine how it's actually tracing it, but I'm just going to stick with the auto color right here. You'll see some other ones for black and white or multicolor pieces. Another important step is under the advanced toolbar, I'm going to click ignore white. And this will eliminate the white that's in here and just give me this single piece. What I'll do once I've got this done is I'll X that out. And I'm almost ready to, uh, to put it uh, as a diagram symbol in my site plan. But I've got to click expand. What this is going to do is you'll now see how the line work is wrapping around this. And I can also double click on the black here and change it to white, which is the color that I want to use in, in my case here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create an ellipse uh, or a circle that's going to serve as uh, the backdrop for this icon right here. I'll grab this circle, holding shift so that we can get a perfect circle. I'm going to create that right here. I'm also going to grab the eyedropper tool and then just pick a color. I'll probably use this blue one right here. And now I can simply overlap these two pieces uh, to form the icon. What you'll notice, and this typically happens when you create the uh, bike symbol first and then create the circle is that they're actually out of order and the bike itself is behind uh, the circle. It's still there just underneath. And either way I can actually bring the bike to the front by right clicking and going arrange bring to front or in this case I'm selecting the circle and I'm going to say send to back. Now it does this all within the same layer up here so you got to make sure these two objects are in the same layer and that way they will actually uh, move within this one layer and I can send the circle to the back. Once I feel good about this I can select both and then right click and group these two together. I'll zoom back out and begin to move this icon up to my site plan. I want to keep these things uh, somewhat small uh, but somewhat readable at the same time so I'll resize this uh, right here. I'm going to put this bike rack symbol up. As I'm moving this around what I can do is hold Alt uh, if I'm on a PC, Option if I'm on my Mac, and I can just click and drag and I'm creating a copy of that icon right there. I'll also zoom out and I'm going to create one more copy and bring it down to the bottom. Once I've got the, the size that I like, I'll bring this down, I'll actually click on it and ungroup it just so I can delete this bike symbol out and holding Alt again and Shift, I will click and create three more circles uh, that will correspond with these icons right here. I would select them, choose a different color from my color sample. I'm just hitting I to get to my eyedropper tool. And selecting the colors that I want to use for these icons and whichever ones correspond best. I'll probably use this blue for the water fountain, orange for the trash can, red for the bench in this case. And I would use the same steps so of selecting this window, uh, image trace, this preset, ignore white, and expand to actually create these icons right here. Again, white as the color for these. I can continue that for all of these icons right here. Now the second thing I want to do is create a legend below uh, this that will uh, give a little more information about what I'm uh, proposing in terms of bike racks, benches, water fountains, and trash cans. Uh, in doing that, I want to actually attach an image with that and a little information about uh, the site furniture that I'm choosing. Maybe the name of it, the company, some additional details like that. 
all of these images uh, have different sizes. They come in, um, you know, a size that maybe I don't necessarily want to use. I, I want something that's going to be formatted for my page. So what I'm going to do is grab the rectangular tool right here, and I'm going to create this shape uh, that will serve as where I'm going to put my picture. Now I'm simply going to change this to a color that I can see, so I'll just choose a light gray. And holding Alt, I'll click and then hold Shift to actually uh, align these pieces together right here. I'll do the same to pull them down, and I just want to arrange four images that are going to serve as sort of my legend for uh, these four pieces of site furniture. And what we're going to do is we'll actually slide these pictures back in our scene and we want to make sure that they are behind this uh, gray box so that I can create a clipping mask and actually put the picture inside of this box right here. Doing this is actually going to give me uh, consistent uh, sizes of all my images no matter where they came from or how they're formatted. And it's also going to allow me to kind of get them aligned uh, for uh, this entire sheet layout right here. Once I've got it uh, set up like this, and it's important that the image is in the background. Again, if it's not, we'll right click on it, go arrange, and send to back to get, actually get it behind this gray box right here. When we have that, we'll select both, and there's a couple options. You can type Control 7 or Command 7 if you're on a Mac, to, which is the shortcut for the clipping mask, or you can right click on both of these when they're selected and say Make Clipping Mask. What we'll do is sort of clip uh, that image just to uh, this rectangle right here. And when you select the rectangle, you'll notice in the um, upper bar, and again, this is only if you have the Essentials Classic, does this bar actually appear, you can see that you can edit the clipping path, which is the outside shape, or you can click on the contents right here. This allows me to move this around if I needed to reposition or even rotate uh, this just slightly to get it just right. Once I've done this, I'm just going to grab these icons and probably overlay them on the corner and put some text. I've sort of finished that out uh, right here, and you can see the icons distributed around the site, uh, attaching that icon, overlapping it with um, the image right here, and then just a quick description. I might even put uh, the manufacturer, uh, some other additional information regarding this site furniture in this piece right here. So using clipping mask and image trace will help you as you're sort of preparing diagrams uh, for your site plan renderings as well as uh, little thumbnails for sections or any other type of design drawing that you're working on.